Hey guys, welcome to my 10 tricks to help you make better texture packs for Minecraft. So the first thing I want to say is I use paint.net. I have Photoshop and some other software, but for Minecraft, I believe paint.net is the fastest and easiest way to make texture packs. So it's a free software and I'll have the link to download it in this description if you do not already have it. But when you use paint.net, when you first get it, it won't be that great and you will need to use some plugins. Here is my entire plugins list. They will all be in the description down below. So you can just download this folder and put it into paint.net. There are also some settings you'll want to use for paint.net. A lot of people ask how I have a dark theme. And all you need to go here, user interface and theme dark. And the most important thing when making texture packs is to have this anti-icing disabled. When you have anti-icing disabled, when you make a line, it is just solid pixels because Minecraft texture packs are pixel art and you just want to have solid pixels. If I had it disabled, it would all be blurry and you don't you don't want blurry textures in game. Here are the different tools. So here's the gradient tool. So let's say you have this color and maybe a dark, a dark one. You can make a gradient. This is the eraser tool. You use this to just erase things. And obviously when you have anti-icing, it's not blurry and it just erases pixels. Here is the pen tool, which you'll use to draw shapes like this. Here's the selection tool, which you use to make a selection. Here's the magic wand tool, which you use to select certain areas and you can make the tolerance higher or lower. Here is the line tool, where if you make this higher, you can make lines and you can move them around. This is very helpful for making kind of art on your, your textures. Anyways, guys, let's move on to my second tip. So this is one of the simplest ways to improve, but also one of the most important color schemes. Any good pack maker uses a color scheme. I use them all the time, every texture pack. One of the most important things in a pack is that all of the diamond textures are the same color. So using a color scheme, you can just select the two colors and then you can go on to your texture or whatever and you can use your gradient. With that being said, let's move on to the next tip. So my next tip is sword proportions. When making a sword for Minecraft texture packs, you want to make sure that it has the right proportions. You have the right proportions so that the sorting game doesn't look too big, too small, so it doesn't take up too much of your screen. This is a good example of a sword with good proportions. I did not make the sword, this sword is from PAX 10. Now I will show you what a sword with bad proportions may look like. This is what a sword with bad proportions may look like. You see the handle is way too long compared to the blade and you want the blade to be slightly longer than the handle and you want the cross guard to be just under the halfway point. As you can see, this cross guard is actually through the halfway diagonal, so you don't want that. You also do not want the blade to go up to the end, otherwise it will be too big and it will cover too much of the screen. Okay, that being said, let's move on to the next tip. Okay, so here's the fourth tip. I'm going to be showing you different types of shading. So this sword is from PAX 10. I would consider this a simple sort of shading. So this is a simple kind and it's very nice and almost every single person likes it. Here is another example of a simple sword. This one just has a line down the center and a little bit of a highlight here. This is from Oob256X and it's a very nice sword and it's good for showing what a simple sword should look like. Here is the sword which Non We made for my collab with him called Lavender256X. This is a slightly more complicated version of the simple sword where you have an outline then a brighter outline and it gives a nice effect. I like this. I don't do it too much though as it looks a bit weird with other items. So yeah, this is a slight variation of what I would consider a simple sword. Now we move on to something like this with bevel. And what bevel is is this line here which makes the front bit whiter and in the next tip I'll show you how to do bevel properly. Here is another bevel sword from Killua256X by Days Virtual and it actually goes all the way to completely white up here so yeah. Before we move on to the next tip there are actually three different shading styles for 60 and X swords. So this is the first type of shading. This is where the center line is brighter than everything else and this is probably my favorite type of shading for a 60 and X sword. This is the next shading where it's basically just a gradient and you can have bevel on here. This is the ultra revamp pack made by end up and I like it. And this is the last sort of shading for 16x. This is probably the most common as this is literally what default Minecraft is, is where the, the center line is the darkest line. This is also very nice and you can also do it to where it doesn't go all the way to the end like this. That's very common as well. Anyways, let's move on to the next tip. 
So now I'm going to be showing you how to bevel properly. I'm doing this because a lot of people do bevel, but they don't do it properly. They make it look really ugly, and I'm going to show you now how to make it look very nice. So first, you're going to want to select the inside of your sword, make a new layer, go effects, selection, outline selection, and I'm going to use 6 for this since this is a 512x sword. And now we've got the outline, and I'm going to do Control shift i to invert the color to make it white. And then I'm just going to delete this, I'm going to delete this, and then I'm going to delete this side. So now we have this bright side. A lot of people leave it here, which is an awful idea to do as it looks disgusting. So I'm going to take the eraser tool right here, make it a bit bigger. I'm going to put it to probably about 100. And I'm going to put my hardness down to zero. I'm going to come here, I'm just going to use the use it up here a bit so now that's faded and then down here I'm gonna use it a bit more I'm gonna make the size maybe 300 400 let's say 400 seems like a good size and now we have this white line that's kind of been blurred and what we do is we go here we click overlay and because of this is the a certain color it doesn't look too great so we go to control a control C new layer paste it and then we do this to a low amount so let's put it to about there that looks good so yeah that's how you do a nice looking bevel that doesn't look too stupid i'm also going to show you how to bevel on 16x what you do is you select these pixels you make a new layer you f you fill it with white again and then you get your tool probably set it to four you kind of just fade that in a bit and then probably put it to 15 and then kind of just fade in from the bottom and then you click overlay and we can pull this out a bit let's put it to about there that looks nice and one thing that we will do is make this edge darker so you just select this control shift u and then make it a bit darker let's put it about there now that's pretty good blade okay let's move on to the next tip Hey guys, now I'm going to be showing you how this particle file works. So this file has every particle in the game on it, and it's important to know which file is which, and it's also important to know what happens to each of these particles. So to start with, these are all the smoke particles. These are all the raindrop particles. Here's the underwater particle. Here's the fishing rod particle, which is important to change since it shows every time you use a fishing rod. Here are the two fire particles. Here is the notes particle, and when making the notes particle, you always want to make sure that you have it in very bright white, otherwise it will not become coloured in game when using the notes. Now here are the two important particles that you need to learn about. This is the crit particle and the sharpness particle. The sharpness particle you pretty much always want to make black and white, but in game they add blue onto it so it all look very bluish. And this one they change very little, just a little bit of yellow, so you can pretty much make this particle whatever color you want here's the heart particle and here is the angry villager particle here is the green star here are the two water particles here are the water splash particles and here are the potion particles here's like the fire resistance particles and such here are the health potion particles and here are like the speed potion and other potions like that particle so that's basically that for particles and you want to just make sure that you make them simple and clean anyways let's move on Hey guys, now I'm going to show you how to recolor all your items to wood, stone, gold, iron, etc. So, I'm just going to be doing it for the sword, to save time, but this applies to anything where you have to recolor it. So armor, armor items, and tools. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have each thing open, and so let's do the stone one first. So for the stone one, you're just going to want to select everything that is diamond, control shift G to make it black and white, and then you're going to make it a bit darker because usually when you make it black and white it's a bit bright. So I'd say about there is right, that looks like a stone sword, right? I think that's good. So the iron one, very similar, you should make it all black and white, but instead you do control shift M to open up curves and you just kind of grab one and you kind of just make it a bit higher. When, sometimes you make it too high, you want to take the bottom and lower it down you kind of just move it around until it looks nice i think this is a good iron sword so yeah so for gold you're going to want to do something a bit different you're going to select it to everything you make it all black and white again for control shift and g i'm going to make a new layer you're going to get this color which is here by default this yellow here 
going to fill this selection. I'm going to double click this, mode, overlay. And that might look a bit bright, so all you're going to do is select it and then just make this a bit darker until it looks about right. So I'd say that looks good there, I believe. That's a good gold sword. And for the wood sword, finally, you're just going to select like a wood color. You can get one from anywhere. And you're going to do the same thing as the gold. Make it all black and white. You layer around, overlay, and then you're just going to select this. Just make it a bit darker again. And there we go. That's how you make the wooden sword. So now we have all the sword types, and yeah, let's move on to the next thing. Hey guys, so now we're going to be talking about the blocks. So this pack is a good example of a pack with good blocks. This is a default pack, so it's nice to have default style blocks. Some of these are from 1.14, some of these are kind of custom, and most of them are from default. And I think it feels really nice with the overall theme of the pack. There's not much to really say about blocks, but basically you just want to make sure that the blocks you're using are lower resolution or the same resolution of, as the textures you're making. And also you want to make sure that your blocks don't have anything wrong with them. For example, the diamond ore being red if your pack is a blue pack. So yeah, there's not much to say about that, but you just want to keep that in mind when making a pack from scratch. Hey guys, so now we're going to be talking about the armor file texture. So here is a very good example of some armor and something that you're going to notice is this is more of a net actually. And this is just a net of little textures. So here's the texture. This is the side of the helmet. All of this up here is for the helmet. This is the underside of the boots. Here are the boots. Here is the chest plate. And here are the shoulders for the chest plate and the top of the shoulders. So when you shade this, you basically select off each thing like this. You select off, you deselect everything else, and then you can do your gradient and such like that. And then you just shade it like it was just a normal texture. So there's also diamond layer underscore two, which is this, which are the leggings. So here are the legs. Here's the bottom of the leg. And then here is the waist. And you just want to shade these all like normal textures as if you would shade anything else. So once you finish shading all of those, you'll just want to recolor them into all the other different texture styles. And yeah, let's move on. So now I'm going to be showing you how the main GUI files work. So first we're going to come up here. And so here's the crosshair. Here's the background of the heart. And then here are the heart. So you shade these and then make, and then they will be overlaid on top of the background here. Here's the poison, here are the wither ones, and then here's the absorption hearts. And so you can just copy these and recolor them over to these ones. Here's the armor icons, here's the ping bars, and then here's the XP bars. So over here, here's the hot bar, over here. Here's the item selector, and then here are the buttons. So the top one is when you can't select it, this one is when it can be selected, and this one is when it is selected. So yeah, GUI is pretty simple, but I see a lot of people messing it up. Just use a template when you work with it, and you'll never get them messed up. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please reply in the comments if there was anything I could improve, because I'm planning to make more of these videos. This video took me about six hours to make, so I really hope you enjoyed it. This is the biggest video project I've ever done. And anyways, thank you for watching. Bye.